our haste to look up what Prophet Muhammad said, we do not pause to take note of who narrated the particular hadith. More often than not, if we look closely, we will find that the hadith was narrated by Abu Huraira. After becoming a Muslim, this companion spent most of his life with the Prophet. There are indeed many lessons for young Muslims from the life of Hazrat Abu Huraira. Originally from the tribe of Dos, as a young man, Abu Huraira came to know about Islam through the efforts of At-Tufail ibn Amr at dawsi The fate of his father is unclear. What do we know about his mother is that he brought her with him to Medina, when he decided to move there to be in the company of Prophet Muhammad. This in itself is a critical point. Often driven by our youthful idealism and the desire to break free, we think of ourselves and think about how we might like to get away from our parents to be free of our burden of taking care of them. However, Abu Huraira took his mother with him, lived with her and cared for her in her old age. Al-Basha relates a particularly touching incident concerning Abu Huraira and his mother. Abu Huraira tried in vain various times to convince his mother of the truth about Islam. When she became angry and turned away from him, he would not harass her but would go off filled with grief. Once his mother said something very cruel about Prophet Muhammad and he went off crying to the Prophet asking him to pray to Allah the Almighty to incline her heart favorably towards Islam. Sometime later that day when Abu Huraira returned home, he was overjoyed to find his mother making the Shahada. Upon arriving in Medina, Abu Huraira had one goal and one goal alone, to be in a company of the righteous and who could be more righteous than Prophet Muhammad. Arriving in a new city, anyone might be concerned, and rightfully so, about finding a place to live, a place to work, and to develop a network of friends. However, so strong was his desire to be with Prophet Muhammad, that he spent most of his waking moments in his company. Abu Huraira spent time unlike many today, observing, making mental notes, and literally memorizing the events, words, and actions unfolding before his eyes. There is so much more that could be said about the wealth of knowledge that Muslims in past generations, in the current generation, and in generations to come have benefited from because of the efforts of Abu Huraira to memorize and preserve the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. What is in our own relationship with the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad? How close are we to the sources of knowledge? What sacrifice do we make so that we might learn and apply what we learn? Lastly, although every transmission of a hadith by Abu Huraira is important, one of them is particularly important because through its transmission to us, we learn about something that would have never been known to us otherwise.